All right, guys, welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about arrays um, and essentially what arrays are. Now, just quickly, this is we're getting towards the last set of our um, set of tutorials in our beginning program tutorial series. Um, so make sure that you are keeping up and uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated with what I'm going to do after this um, tutorial series. So let's go on to arrays. So uh, to explain what an array is, first of all, I'm going to recap what a variable is. Um, so a variable. If you remember, we said in the previous tutorial, a variable was essentially a box in our memory. A storage space in memory, yeah? So in memory, we have some sort of storage space. But we say in that storage space, I want to put something inside here, right? So it could be anything. So if I had a variable, or uh, an integer, int, and I called my variable number, so that's just the name I give it to, the variable. An int number, what that would do, that line of code, it would say to the computer, okay, I need some storage space. The computer would say, okay, here's some storage space. Now, my num this, the name given to this box is number. We refer to this box as being number. Because now this box is now um, the storage space for our number variable. Now, if I said number... is equal to 10 then what would happen the computer would place 10 in this memory slot okay if I said number is equal to 6 then the computer would say okay we're gonna put 6 now so we're gonna take whatever out was there we're gonna take it out and put 6 there now there's a couple of problems with this what if I wanted something like as an example, say I wanted a set of values. So I wanted 10, 6, 7, 8, something like that. You can't do that with a variable. You can't do that with a variable. Okay? You can probably, some some of you out there who are experienced programmers, you could say you could do with that with a string. But um, we won't be able to refer to each number separately in a string unless we've done some um, extra level of parsing. Okay. So um, we do this with arrays. So I'm going to show you how an array works. Array is essentially a variable, you're right? But it's got a set of, um, it's like this. So array has a set of slots, okay? And in each slot, you can store a value. So in this one, I can put 10, 6, 7, 8. And I can, by the way, I can have as many slots as I want, right? I can have as many slots, you know, I've got six here, I can have as many as I want. So in the program we would say array. Oh, let me put it down on the below. In the program we would say array. And then we would have to give it a name, right? We would have to say, so I'm going to call this numbers. numbers. So remember what I said, numbers refers to the name of the array. So now numbers. Okay, and numbers would be equal to this time a set of values. So how do we give the array a set of values? We would simply open our curly braces like that. 10, just rub that little tiny thing there. 10, 6, 7, 8. Remember I can have more slots. I can have more things. So I can have 9, 3. Let me close it off. Okay, 9, 3. I can have as many as I want in an array. Okay, so what's so significant about this? Well, in our program, we can do something like, okay, or we can say print, sorry, we can say print array, print array, in square braces, we could say print three. Okay, now you're probably looking at this like, what is going on? Well, one of the greatest things about arrays, each one of these um, elements in the array, has what's known as an index okay an index is just, all it is is basically uh, the position number of that element so this is um, in zero that's one two that's three that's four that's five now you're probably thinking why isn't this number 10 here why isn't that position one well computers start counting from zero so I know that doesn't really make sense, but that's just how it is, okay? So computers start counting from zero. So 10 is in the zeroth position of the numbers array. 
Okay, so that's how you should think of it. Six is in the first position of the numbers array, okay? That's how you need to think about it. So if I say print array, the element in the array at the third position, what do you think is going to be printed? Those of you who said eight are correct. Those of you who said nine, you know, remember, <coughs> remember that computers start, um, no, those of you who said seven, remember computers start counting from zero. So that's the zeroth position, and we have ten in the zeroth position of the numbers array. We have six in the first position of numbers array, etc. okay? And we can go in all day. Um, and then I can do something like print array, and I can do something like five, five. And what would be printed out? That's right, if you said three, if you said three, that is right, okay? Now, what if you don't try to do something clever, you know? as Obviously, as a beginner program, you might think, okay, you know, I might, let me try something new. So if you said, what if you try to do print array at position nine? Now, look at our array. We've got how many? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six elements. Okay, the last position of our um, sixth element is five. Okay, we haven't got a nine, a position number nine. So what would happen? Well, the computer or the compiler will print an error. It will tell you, okay, no, index out of bounds. Index, remember first of the number, it would say index out of bounds. I.e. nine is out of bounds. We don't have an element in the ninth position of our array. Okay. Now, in some program languages, since we've got time, I'll show you something else. If I just... Some programming languages, you also have what's known... Uh, you can, instead of um, doing, you know, as we had before, we said array numbers is equal to... I mean, we actually said sev elements, gave it the set. Well, it's, you sometimes you don't... You, I mean, you don't have to give it the set of numbers initially. You can do something like this below. You can say array fruits is equal to what a new array new array with how many uh, how many um, elements are we going to have we're going to have 10 elements so now what we've done what that line of code would do it, I'll show you exactly what we would do okay I'll make it three so that you know so it's easier for me on the small screen so what would do it would make the computer would look the compiler would look at this and say okay first thing I'm going to do I'm going to make a fruits memory location in our mem in our <coughs> fruit storage location in our memory that's the first thing so this is the pretend this is our memory in our computer the compiler will say okay i've made a space for the fruits array and it's going to have it's going to be a new array so we know the computer knows that this is going to be an array and how many elements is it going to have it's going to have one two three four remember zero one two three yeah Remember, always remember computer start counting from zero. So if you have three, uh, remember it's going to be four. So it's always going to be one more than the number you give it. Okay, so now this is empty, right? That's empty. So what? how do we fill it in? We could say array. No, we don't need to say array. We say fruits at position two is equal to an apple. Okay, once the compiler sees this line of code, it says, okay, I'm going to look for position two in our fruits array. So I'm going to look here, and it says I'm going to put Apple in that position. And that's pretty cool, right? Um, that's that's quite a cool way. So you don't have to necessarily say, when you when you declare an array, you know, remember when you declare an array, you don't have to initialize it with set values at the beginning. You can do that later on. One of the other thing, cool things that most people do with arrays is that they normally have what's known as a loop. You know the for loop, remember? And we say for every element, in array we want to print out that element all right so every element in our array so what you can do this is known as iteration where you go through each element in the array so say our array was a set of fruits and had around uh, like four four different fruits um, what you could do you could go through uh, with this line of code you could print out the name of each one of those fruits just two lines of code which is pretty cool okay so that's enough for arrays today um, please do subscribe. Um, if you have any comments, please do leave them on your YouTube channel. If, it, if you're still confused or anything like that, please do feel free to visit the website, message me. Uh, please do post on the website. I'll put a reply much quicker there. And yeah, um, yeah until next tutorial, bye-bye.